Maria Sharapova, the champion tennis star, is setting just as many records in the business world as she is on the court. I sat down with her at an event in New York where she promoted her Sugar Pova candy line. Welcome, Maria. Thank you very much. Is it, is it Sugar you. Pova? No. It's not. It's not. It's That's Sharapova. the name of your candy, li candy Sugar line. Sugar Pova is the candy. Sharap Although now I type in my last name and it auto corrects to Sugar Pova, so. <laughs> okay. I got to check that one so out. So you've had some success with that. I've um, had a little bit. And and there were some rumblings that you were going to change your name yeah. uh, for the U.S. Open to do that, <laughs> but you decided against that? I did decide. I considered it for quite a while. Um, I wanted to do something fun and different. I mean, that's what the whole candy line was all about, was doing something unexpected and different. Um, and then the idea came about of, because everyone was starting to say, oh, Maria, Sugar Pova, the name kind of came about and became fun, and everyone was laughing about it, and I thought that could be kind of interesting. But it, I just realized it's, it's very difficult to change last name. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay, so there's a long process. There's a long but process, you accomplished and I don't, your goal. Have, I don't have a lot of time for it. So. Okay, but yeah. you accomplished your goal, which was to raise some awareness for your there brand. There was. I think, yeah, there's definitely a lot of awareness. And in the last year, I feel like the awareness of the Sugar Pova brand has, has grown tremendously. We're, we're available in so many different countries. We're now available um, online where anyone from around the world can purchase it. And, it can be delivered to their home and doesn't matter where they live at, at great prices. So it's been such a, a unique process to see grow and evolve. And um, yeah, and here we are a year later still at Henry Bendel's expanding our collection as well. And you have so many other products, but it's tennis that has brought you here. Absolutely. Uh, and you've kept that as your, your core. Absolutely. Um, have you ever felt like you could expand too much and take your focus off tennis? Um, I think I've done that? a really, I think I've done a really good job in my career of balancing um, my career and my professionalism on the court and doing what I have to do there. And then when when you get off it, um, expanding into other things, keeping your mind creative, working. Um, you know, I never had a typical education, so I feel like I learned through so many things, whether it's business or advertising, through maybe educational things that I would have learned in school or internships right. I could have taken. I've actually learned through working with brands and being in in meetings and in rooms with people that are extremely talented in their departments and knowledgeable at what they do. And that's part of the reason I wanted to start something on my own because I felt like I did have that experience from learning from them. How long do you think you'll play on the circuit? Time will tell. You know, time will tell, the body will tell. I certainly didn't think when I was 16, 17 years old I'd be 26 and still playing, but here I am and I still feel like I have quite a bit to go. Were you surprised by Bartoli's recent decision to retire? You know, the, the sport is very demanding. I think uh, a lot of the work that we put in before we go on to center court, before the cameras roll, before anything happens, is never really seen in that work and that daily effort. Um, and it's a challenging sport. So I'm not, I'm not surprised. I think she ended on, on an incredible note of winning Wimbledon, such a huge accomplishment. So um, good for her. You know, there's so many at her age especially, there's so many things in life as a woman that you want to, you know, do and try and family and kids and, and so I'm not. Yeah. I talk to a lot of athletes and many of them make the mistake of, of not really getting into endorsements and business or trying to get into it until after they've left, which makes it more difficult. When yeah. you retire, do you feel that you'll be positioned to go into business? Is that where you expect to go? I feel like it's always been part of my plan. I've never, I've always, the idea of not, I've played tennis since I was four years old, but the, so the idea of not playing tennis and not having anything to do at all actually scares me. And I think it has been, especially when I went through my injury, I, w I didn't play for nine months. So the thought of, oh, what if I never make it back? Um, it always kept me thinking about what do I really want to do? What, what do you I want to achieve? What, what do you want to do? I want to be in business. I, I love creating things that you know, that you're inspired by, you see, you see an image, you see a product, um, something strikes in your mind, you see it going in different directions, you sketch it, you produce it, you go through samples, you see it on a shelf, and that's something that it's been with candy. Then you go through the reports and the trends and the business side. Um, you know, it's not just 
there's so many things that evolve around one little product, and you learn in the candy business. I mean, every single um, you know distributor has different rights. Every different country requires different things, different ingredients, different labels. Um, it just the list keeps going on and on. And to talk, to hear you talk, you can tell that you're very well versed on the business side. But there are people who say that Serena Williams, for instance, has won more titles mm -hmm. but doesn't have as many endorsements. Why is that? Um, I think every every player on the tour has has their certain strengths and, and what they do and what they've accomplished. I think Serena has done an incredible job on the court. Her her tennis has spoken, you know, for itself in the last however many years that she's competed, the amount of Grand Slams that she's been able to win, um, especially at her age now, still competing at the highest level and maybe her best level yet, speaks a lot for what she's accomplished. So at the end of the day, it is tennis that's brought us all these other things. Um, right. But I think it's also how you use it and how you want to use it. If you, Not many people, not many players have the interest to do other things, which is which is okay because we're if, if we're good enough at what we do, if we're successful, if we make the right amount of money, we. Some people don't have is, to. We is, have the luxury not to. I think it's a really choice. Is that really how you see it? Do you think that you're the most successful because in endorsements and business because the other athletes have chosen not to do it or because you're, you've got a talent in that area? I never like to think that I'm successful because I, then you don't want to go for more. I've achieved a lot in my career, but to sit here and say that I'm the best at this or I'm a great tennis player, I don't like to think like that because it kind of it puts you in a dead spot. I want to have I have bigger goals. I want to be greater, and if even if right. I don't reach it, I still I want to I want to get up there. But of course, we are in America, and America uh, money is a proxy for success. Uh, you were listed by Forbes magazine as the highest paid female athlete in the world. So you are the best in that area. There's not right now. There's not. A, an athlete that really compares to you. So what is it know. do you think that you've brought that has helped you do that? I've never actually seen statistics on other athletes' bank accounts, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know what we're comparing this to. <laughs> um, but I, I think you have to love what you do. You have to have, I mean, you, you have to have a plan. You have to have good people around you. It's not, it's also about a great, t it's, it's, it's teamwork. I mean, I, I have a very close knit of people that I've had for many years as part of my team and manager and um, and a group that every day wakes up and, and thinks how to build and work and inspire from each other and um, and keep it fr fresh and fun. Uh huh. And now you have a tennis racket bag collection that you've done with Head. Yeah. That's one of the yeah. things you've done. Yeah. You're here today for, it's for the candy, right? Right, for Sugar Pova. Okay. Right. Well, we've partnered with Henry Bendels on on accessories. I mean, Henry Bendels over the years has been known to produce some of the, the best um, accessories, whether it's um, hair pieces or, um, or earrings and necklaces. Um, so that was a fun collaboration because these are actual pieces that I, you know, I like to do things that, I mean, selfishly, that I wear, especially on court. So I wear little bobby pins and earrings and I like to accessorize my, my on-court looks. It makes it fun and, and people look at that and um, so that was one of the reasons we did this collaboration together. You also have a design venture with Cole Haan, I understand. Yeah, I designed for Cole Haan for about six years, many seasons. That was, um, that was probably one of the riskiest things I've done in terms of the fashion world because in the beginning um, my name was not very well known and um, to kind of to go into a fashion venture um, from a tennis player's career, especially with a big name brand like that, um, so widely popular in, in the United States, was you know it was a risky decision. But yeah. I um, I worked really hard at it. I gave a lot of effort into, and I learned a lot. I mean, you have to you have to be open to learning, to understanding, um, to making sure that you understand you know the people's direction as well. That it's not just a single-minded um, move. Have you had products or? been approached by companies that have made you say, you know what, I don't think that's right I for have. me. I have. What kinds of things do you look for um, in companies before you align? I look for companies that have similar values, that have, that understands my career, that understand the time limit that I have in, in order for the partnership to work. Um, you know, the core of the brands are extremely important to me. Um, the vision where you see, where you see something not just today, but in five, ten years from now. For me, it's about long-term partnerships than, than just a year or six months. Um, would, would you take a chance on a small, like, there are a lot of small companies out there that have good products, 
but don't have the money to afford a brand like you. Right. Would you ever take stock or do you take stock in companies? Uh, I, have, I have a financial manager who I work with very closely on, on working on those different things. But I will say that I didn't go, um, you know, into Sugar Pova head on with, with an unlimited budget, that's for sure. <laughs> we certainly, um, you know, we, we set the line at a, a certain, um, you know, at a certain extent. It was very important to, to not go overboard, to understand what was important. It was about quality, it was about being premium. Um, it took two years to create um, with a certain budget. Our marketing budget was not huge, but we had my name behind it, which I think drove a lot of the sales and the popularity around right. the world. I read that when you had your shoulder injury, you made a concerted effort to I say, did. you know what, I'm going to focus on my brand. I did. Um, what were the things that you did to focus, like to, to get, to start meeting with mm. your sponsors and things? Well, I think in that period of time, it was about, for me, it was the idea that I could maybe one day no longer be able to play tennis. So it's kind of like, what, you know, what do you want to do? Where do you see yourself? How do you see yourself evolving as a person? I mean, I personally never had a proper education, so no matter how much money I made on the tennis court, I didn't, I didn't want that to stop. I didn't want to, my thinking to stop. When you're on the court, it's like, not only is it physical and it's, you're putting in so much physical work, but so much of it is mental. And that's, that's the challenge that I've had since I was a four-year-old girl, is the, the mental side of, of the game. And, and I wanted to find challenges in other, in other different areas. Um, in business, I thought would, was one of them because I've always been interested in seeing how things come alive and how they do and what works and what doesn't. You've mentioned that a few times that you haven't had a formal education. Is, does that bother you ever? Um, it didn't bother me because I don't know what the other side would look like, but I've always, my mother stressed it to me numerous times. Okay. Um, she was very, I mean, I, I always studied online. Have you thought of going online. back at some huh? point? Will you go back? I think, may, I would love to. I don't know if I'd actually have the proper time to. But I, I would love to experience it. There's so many things that, you know, I sit here and I say I want to experience and then I just keep playing tennis because at the end of the day, that's what I love. You've learned some toughness. Mm. Um, I don't know if you got that just on the court, if you got part of it from business, but who are your mentors um, as a businesswoman? I have a very small group of people around me that I've had for many years, my mom and my dad. and. My manager, Max, who's managed me since I was 11 years old. Um, you know, a few more people and, and that's it, a financial manager. I've worked with, with the same people for many, many years. I think that's people that know you the best, that understand you and your vision are the ones that you can't do things on your own. You know, you need, there might be a name behind it, but it's a team effort to bring it up. And I've always, I've always believed in it. You can't be selfish in this business. You have to you have to be able to take information in in order to produce something big. To be a global brand, or do you feel that you're global enough? Are there parts of the world that you would like to permeate uh, with your brand that you don't feel you penetrated yet? Um, there are different. I mean, there are different markets which you know you. We've seen our product come in, into so many different countries. Um, you know, I personally, I, I didn't know how gummies would do in Russia because when I left Russia at, at the age of seven, I didn't know if gummy candy, I never seen gummy candy. When I came to the United States, I was amazed. I went to a movie theater, I was, you know, went to these stores and you see these boxes with gummy filled candy. I thought it was genius. I'd never seen something like that. And then I went back to, to Russia and I was looking for it and I could never find it. So. I, I was a little bit uncertain how it would do in the Russian market, but Russia has become our biggest market since we launched it. Um, yeah. So that's been a, a surprise. But Asia is something that I really, you know, want, where I want to do well in. Um, you know, it will require a lot of, a lot of time and maybe a smaller packaging for the Japanese, Japanese people. They yeah. like everything a little bit smaller. Um, so it's it's about making those adjustments. That'll do it. What a performance! That was very special, as was the resistance and the fight that was shown by Venus Williams, but she was outplayed. That's one of the heaviest defeats meted out for Venus Williams in Grand Slam tennis. Sharapova is back to her very, very best. You've won all the titles. I mean, you've done the Grand Slams and the U.S. Open and all of that. When you look at now um, going ahead is it an Olympic goal that you would want or 
as a tennis player, what more That'd is there to special. do? That'd be special. Yeah, an Olympic gold would be special. <laughs> but did I hit the nail on the head or not? Yeah, you did. But I, I think you. St I still go into every Grand Slam, and I still, yeah. you know, inside of me, deep down, I have to feel like I still haven't won it because you still have to have that hunger when you go out on the court. Because if you go out on the court and you feel like I've done this, I've done that, I do it every single day, that's not fun. You have to challenge yourself. And I, I go out there and I, you have to work just as hard, if not harder. I mean, the tennis has become much more physical, much more mental than it's ever been. And you have to keep striving for, for being better. Have you squashed your beef with Serena? <laughs> we haven't spoken too much about it, but we, we did. We left a lot of what had happened in London. Why did I just? I don't want to talk too much about it because we shouldn't. <laughs> but but why didn't you back down? I didn't. Yeah, I mean, you, I'm a strong you girl. You were tough. You came out with I'm some a strong girl. <laughs> some do the world words yourself. I've always been tough. I've been tough professionally. Um, you know, it's it's really where where you have to be tough is in business and professionally when you're out on the court. Um, it's won me. It's won me a lot in life. You know, I'm is I'm that, not the strongest girl. I'm not the fastest girl on the court, but I've been extremely tough and it's brought me, you know, many titles and many victories and many smiles. So all right. Well you keep going. You're Thank doing you. something right. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. No Maria Thank you. Sharapova. Yes, that's right. I appreciate it. Good luck with Sugar Pova. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and with Maria Sharapova, I'm Lee Hawkins. See you next time. I'd love to sit here and say, you know, I wanna win the next I wanna win ten majors when my career's finished and I wanna do this, but I, I, I never have been one to put a number on it. I just want to play and play well. And you know, if I pl play well, I know that I'll have chances to win many golf tournaments. Do you see yourself becoming a billionaire one day? Um, I, don't, I really don't know. I really can't say. But um, right now, I'm on a good pace. <laughs>